All right, we're going to get started here with our post-race press conferences for tonight's Sprint Unlimited. We are joined by our second place finisher, the driver of the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford, Joey Logano. Joey, just talk a little bit about your uh, the last few laps out there for you as you came in second. Uh, yeah, it's close. <laughs> well, it was um, it's a lot of fun out there. Uh, we had a really good Shell Pennzoil Ford that um, yeah, we started last, and uh, we worked our way up towards the front fairly quick the first part of the race, and we kept... Uh, putting four tires on, um, which kind of set us back towards the middle and then work your way back up. I made one mistake and lost some spots and um, started getting them back up there at the end. And, uh, you know, overall, um, you know, I'm proud of the speed we had. Um, we were close <laughs> to, to almost winning it. Um, you know, if that, that caution had come out at the end, if I was to get the, be able to get that push from Larson um, before he got really loose, uh, that may have uh, gave me enough to push out in front of the 11, possibly, or at least to, to stay next to him for another lap and try to uh, be door to door to cross the line. Um, but you know, overall, uh, you know, speedway racing sometimes it's hard to uh, hard to pass for the lead for sure. I thought the restart was going to be a good uh, opportunity to start next to the leader and try to uh, jump out in front of him, and um, just didn't line up perfectly tonight. But that's okay. We're uh, you know, obviously, like I said, we're picking up where we left off from last year. So, uh, you know, looking forward to the 500. All right, we'll open up to questions. We'll start down here with Matt and then go to Lewis and then Kenny. Matt Weaver with AutoEat.com. We talk all the time about how this race is kind of a prelude to the 500 and it's an opportunity to kind of learn things in advance of next Sunday. But with the way people are so aggressive on Saturday night, is there really anything you can take out of it? Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you watched the 500 last year, but it was pretty aggressive at the end when there were three wide and all bumping each other, and uh, it was awesome. So I don't expect anything less uh, when it comes to next Sunday. So, um, you know, it, it, there's a lot to learn for sure. It's nice just to knock the rest off, um, you know, let the guys make a pit stop or two, and, um, you know, let uh, my spotter and myself kind of get used to running the draft again and, you know, make sure we remember everything. And uh, so that's good. I didn't forget everything, so that's good. And, um, you know, so it definitely learned a lot, you know, for sure. But, you know, it's also all about the trophy tonight, and uh, we came up short. Um, but I guess the good news is, isn't it like one guy ever that's won the Unlimited, won the 500? I think it was like Dale Jarrett, like a long time ago. So that was the last night. And 93? It's happened five. Well, it hasn't happened since I was three years old. So I uh, feel pretty good about that. Then that's, that's the silver lining on this whole thing. Two thousand. Shoot. You guys looked that up, didn't you? All right, we'll go to Lewis. I thought I saw that stat earlier. Uh, Lewis Frank of Reuters. So you've had your first overtime restart. What's your verdict? Nothing different um, because the we took the white flag under green. So if it was last year's um, green white checker policy, it would have been the same. It never came into play. You know, the only way it would have came into play is if the caution came out before we got to the white flag, which it, it didn't. So um, it, the rule didn't really come into play uh, to be any different than what it used to be this time. Thanks, Kenny. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. A couple of things. First of all, uh, it seemed like there were some strange bedfellows out there a couple of times with you may be working with guys that you hadn't worked with before or different manufacturers or things like that. Did, did that cross your mind any at all tonight? That's like, okay, this is not somebody that I usually am racing with and I know what they're going to do, or was it just a non-factor? And also your teammate uh, – Brad had some issues with debris on the front of his car, overheating like that. Did, did you have any heating issues whatsoever, and is that a concern for you guys going forward? I think it's a huge concern. Um, it looked like a landfill on the front straightaway. You know, I was like, jeez. <laughs> My dad was in the garbage company. I know all about it, but uh, <laughs> it looked just like it. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, you know, it's tough. You know, uh, you know, when you're the leader, you're the first one to pick it up. So, and there's no way to get it off unless you give up the lead and try to, you know, and the same thing happened to Dale uh, last year in this race as he got hot and he had to pit early. So, um, you know, the back straightaway is clean, you know, so it's all coming from the grandstands. And, um, you know, so it, it's tough, you know, it's definitely a, um, 
you know, it's not much you can do about it. A lot of times it's just floating around and it gets stuck on your nose. But um, that, that definitely plays a lot into your first part of the question uh, about who we work with. Um, you know, it, it, if you have the option, you always go with someone you know, um, you know, you know how they're going to play it out and you know how they are and you're, or who you think is faster or a manufacturer that's, uh, you, know, um, you know, the same as yours or a teammate. All that goes through your mind when you make decisions, for sure. But sometimes you don't really have an option. At the same time, you know, sometimes it's like, well, I got to do this, you know. And um, but this is definitely a good race to um, definitely learn about your competitors. And uh, you know, I'll rewatch the race and see what moves people are making and stuff like that. And it was funny to watch how the race kind of changed as uh, guys learned uh, what was going on out there. You know, in the beginning of the race, it was uh, I felt like it was more three wide racing. And then, you know, towards the middle uh, end of the race, it was, um, you know, too wide and everyone protecting the top. And uh, so it just kind of, it was funny how everyone kind of learned from the first half and changed what they were doing. It was interesting to me. Over here to Chris. Chris Knight, CatchFest.com. Joey, with uh, how crazy and chaotic it was out on the track tonight, do you expect a relatively calm duel on Thursday night with the charter system in place? Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's a trophy to win there too, right? <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got one speed, so I can tell you what the twenty-two car is doing. I can't control everybody else, but my uh, pedal is gonna be to metal. I know that much. Bruce Martin with Speed Sport Magazine and Autosport.com. Is there a way to have a race like this to where? doesn't turn out to be carnage like it is or is that just the nature of where <laughs> it's a non-points race you throw everything at it that you can yeah i don't know if it's the fact that it's a non-points race that plays into it or it's just super speedway racing um and it's just you know guys on the gas you know and we've seen we've seen crashes really early in the daytona 500 that's a 500 mile race you know so we've seen it go both ways uh you know on this thing but typically yes the unlimited is a uh, um there's a lot of there's a lot of crashes in it <laughs> to say the least and um you know tonight there was a few for sure um didn't seem like there was uh i have to watch it but i didn't think there was any huge pile-ups but um i don't know i i so I, I don't see a whole bunch from from where i'm at sometimes are there more crashes in this race than the all-star race in your opinion yeah just because when we yeah typically a charlotte you know maybe two cars will get into each other and crash but here, when two cars get into each other, then it takes out five or six cars with them. So uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Dustin? Dustin Long, NBC Sports. And I just caught the last part of it, so forgive me if you've gone over this. But you, you mentioned you thought the race was kind of a little bit different. You mentioned three cars three wide early, two wide later. But was this was this that much of a different race than from what you've seen and gone and experienced in, in years past? Or, or what kind of stood out that that made it feel a little bit more different I, I don't think it really was much different than last year um to be honest with you but just kind of the way um different drivers uh you changed the way they were driving their car throughout the race was interesting to me but that that's but there's nothing really that stood out that was like well that's way different or something played out way different than what i thought was going to happen you know we were watching last year uh, to this year at I thought it was fairly similar the way the race played out, the way cautions fell. It all seemed, you know, be fairly similar. Any additional questions for Joey? One other, if I may, is the overtime procedure. Uh, what was it like going through that, and what do you p pick up from that, maybe moving forward, since this was the first time? Yeah, I was, um, I was saying earlier, uh, no problem. I know you got me late, but uh, it, it didn't really come into play because the, we took the white flag under green which would be the end of the race in the old format and the new format so it doesn't really it didn't come into play this time so no change thanks kelly kelly crandall from popular speed.com joe you mentioned earlier about this is a good race to check out your competitors and it seemed like tonight it was a lot of penske versus gibbs practice earlier today both organizations were fast could this be the theme of the week the penske versus gibb battle seems like it's shaping up that way but um you know uh I thought uh, in practice today there was a lot of Hendrick cars, in particular the uh, 24 and the 88 seemed really fast in uh, single car runs. And 
or Daytona, so you never count out uh, Junior or, or Jimmy or any of those guys. So, um, yeah, we've seen here that, you know, anyone can win. Um, you know, anything can happen for sure. So you, you definitely got to look at everyone as a threat for sure. But um, you know, if you look at who led a lot of laps tonight and, and kind of, uh, you know, the guys that were able to make the moves for the lead um, were – uh, guys with very good cars, yes, but also very experienced uh, speedway racers that um, know what they have to do to make things happen. So, um, yeah, I think it definitely takes both when you come to a racetrack like this. And you, it's it's not like you can have a 30th place car and win here. It's not like it, it used to be like that when we had the tandem drafts and stuff. But now that, that it's a big pack of fast cars still helps. All right, we'll take a final question from Chris Knight. How was the first race with the digital dash at Daytona? Um, it, it was uh, okay. Um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely, it's different as it's, you know, you gotta get used to it for sure. Um, you know, it's, it, pit road is, is where it comes into to play the most. Right. And that's where, you know, you're trying to maximize your pit road speed without speeding. And, um, you know, it's tough because, uh, the dash is a little delayed to what's actually happening. So sometimes you're, you're going faster than your dash tells you, and then it catches up and you're slowing down and your, your lights and your tack is all off because you're, you're just off a little bit just because it's, it's delayed getting to the screen for some reason. And um, yeah, there's not much we can do about that. That's, that's, you know, obviously it's given to us that way. So, um, yeah, it's definitely room for improvement, uh, I would say, from, from that standpoint. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. It's different. Uh, it looks cool in there. So... <laughs> Hey, we look cool. <laughs> All right, Joey. Well, thanks, and good luck for the rest of Speed Weeks. All right, thanks.